Hey, Providence Church, hope you are doing well. You know, I think that the theme verse for 2020 is Proverbs 16, 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. None of us knew what 2020 had in store for us. Uh, it's just been a whirlwind and it's just been unprecedented. And we've been trying to seek the Lord as we've navigated this. And of course, personally for me, uh, my father passed away last month. So it's just been a really, really uh, difficult and interesting time. I wanna thank all of you who've been praying. Uh, first of all, for me and the loss of my father and my family, but then also praying for us as elders as we've had to navigate, again, things that there's just not really a playbook for. How do you lead a church through a pandemic? So today I wanna do a, a couple of things. First of all, I wanna tell you what's coming for us in August. And then second of all, I wanna share a little bit of what's gone into the decisions that we've made as we've navigated the last few months. First of all, I want you to know that beginning on August the 9th, we will reopen our church for in-person public gatherings, both at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, we're gonna have those services where you can reserve your seat just like we did before. You'll get an email with all the details for that. And then we're gonna continue the same safety measures that we had in place in June. So we're going to uh, require masks until you get to your seat, or we're gonna socially distance the, the, the seats, and then we're also going to clean between services. So that's on August the 9th. I'm really excited to be back together. August the 2nd, uh, we are going to start a new series uh, going through the book of Habakkuk, which will lead us through all of August, which I love this book, and I think it's gonna be very appropriate uh, for the time that we're in. Habakkuk is complaining with God uh, about what he's going through, and God says to him, I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. And so that's our prayer, that God is doing something bigger than we can see as we walk through this. Now, let me just say, August 9th, we're reopening, but I understand that, uh, I love how someone said it, we're all in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. And we, I know that some of us have legitimate concerns, health concerns, uh, that maybe you're not ready yet for the large gathering. And so what we wanna do as elders is provide you three different options of how you can participate in Sunday morning gathering uh, and Sunday morning worship. Uh, first of all, you can come again beginning August 9th, reserve your seat and be part of our large gathering here at the church. Uh, second, you maybe aren't ready for that, but maybe you're comfortable with a smaller group. And so we wanna encourage you to maybe invite community group members who are comfortable uh, to meet together into your home or maybe even a neighbor uh, into your home and have a watch party, so to speak, but it's actually a worship uh, experience, right? That you can go to our providencefrisco.com slash live watch the live stream together, participate in worship together. We have a discussion, uh, sermon discussion guide available online that you can actually discuss the sermon together after. Or maybe, here's the third option, you're not ready for even that kind of a gathering and you're saying, man, I still feel like I need to stay home. And, and so we just say, by all means, then do so, but, but really, be intentional with it. Spend time with your family before the service. The live stream will begin at 11 a.m. Spend time praying and preparing your heart. Providence Kids has, has many things that you can have in place for your children uh, that they can participate, that there's activities there, there's discussion questions for them after the service, there's videos for them also uh, to, to worship after the service. So. Uh, use those resources that we have for you. So one of those three options, we pray that you will stay connected to the church and continue gathering. Now, what I wanna do is speak a little bit into the decision-making uh, and, and just give you an insight into our heart and our mind and what has led us to make the decisions that we have made. It's not been easy. As I, as I say, it's not been easy. Uh, again, there's not a playbook for this. We've sincerely sought the Lord uh, to do what we feel like is wisest, uh, to continue to care for our people and continue to stay on mission. We believe strongly in gathering 
honoring together as a church. Hebrews 10 uh, says that we are to consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This passage is meant to highlight the necessity of meeting together, of gathering together. It's meant to be a warning against isolation in the Christian life. But this, this doesn't mean that the only way to meet together is to meet in a church building and have at least, let's say, 100 or 200 people together. Again, the time that Hebrews 10 was written, most of the church was meeting in homes, actually. And then also the time that it was written, there was no such thing as live stream or Zoom. And so the heart of this passage is don't be in isolation. Don't neglect gathering together with the body. But wisdom needs to be employed as well. In the New Testament, for instance, in Acts chapter 9, verse 25, the, the, the disciples learn of a plot to kill Paul. So they put him in a basket and they lower him down through a hole in the wall so that he can escape safely. So yes, they were bold on mission, but they also employed wisdom. Today in Iran, uh, they have to gather, uh, but they can't gather uh, publicly. Uh, they're, they're, they will be persecuted. They will be killed in, in some instances. And so they gather privately in their homes. They in fact hide their Bibles, their song sheets whenever they see uh, somebody or they hear footsteps approaching. So they use wisdom. So in making these decisions, we've sought the Lord in prayer. We have sought his word. We've sought the counsel of health professionals and of our government officials. And we've talked to churches in our area who are in the same boat that we are in. And, and again, churches that think the way we do. And so in July, we were going to press on as we did in June, but as we saw the number of cases in COVID-19 continue to skyrocket, and then we saw that our governor uh, in back-to-back -back proclamations, first on masks, and then also on pushing pause on his reopening plan, it just gave us cause for concern. And by the way, we do wanna to listen to our government officials. We don't feel like they are persecuting the church and they're trying to keep the church from, from gathering. This is something that is affecting all gatherings. And we do wanna use wisdom and listen to our, our government officials. I heard a story where in World War II, the government had a, a blackout on the Eastern seaboard. And so they, they, they could not have any gatherings, any lights open because they were afraid of attacks coming uh, from the enemy. And so the church didn't complain and say the government is taking away our rights or coming against us or persecuting us. No, they, they complied in wisdom. And by the way, we also live in a community that is watching us. And church isn't meant to be just for us. It's meant to be for this community that we love them, that we are a witness to Christ. And if there are gyms and if there are other establishments, other owners of companies, let's say, uh, barbershops, whatever it may be, that, that this is affecting them, the restrictions, and they see us say, man, forget the restrictions, we're gonna do whatever we want. Well, that just hurts our witness. And our prayer is that people will look at the way we have conducted ourselves through this pandemic. And hopefully one day when this is over, more of those people will wanna come and be a part of this. And so to that end, we felt that we made the wisest decision at the time in July to push pause on our public in-person gatherings. Again, uh, we kept uh, praying through it and kept assessing uh, today, where we're at, uh, again, we feel we're in a different position. We feel like uh, in, in most cases, especially in Collin County, we've seen that the numbers are starting to level off. And I know in other counties, they're continuing to rise, but we feel like we're uh, learning that now, man, this is something that is not going away immediately, and we're gonna have to learn to coexist uh, with this virus. And so because of that, we've, felt that the wisest thing for us to do at this time is to again have those three different options to continue uh, again emphasizing the importance of gathering together and we ask you to prayerfully seek God and do what you feel is wisest for your family either again in your home with other community group members or in, with your family or come join us uh, we believe it's the time to gather together but let's not forget more than anything else our mission 
Our mission is that we would be the fragrant aroma of Christ, as we talked about yesterday, commending Jesus to our neighbors and our community around us. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you August the 9th.